So the two major concepts we talked about in class this week were using cylinders and laying out a drawing. How do you lay out a drawing? Two different ways using gesture or alignment lines. And the major thing to think about when you're laying out a drawing is relationship. So I talked about, you know, if you're using a simple cylinder sort of object, I mean, the major relationship here is a vertical relationship. What I mean by that is that things are sort of, they line up in a central axis like this. Or on this teapot, for example, things sort of line up here, meaning this could be one alignment line or one relationship, a major relationship. Another relationship might be from here to here. So those are some of the relationships I'm talking about. Whereas those ones were vertical and horizontal. If you had a figure, this is from line of action. This figure, it's not gonna be so vertical. So those are the two things we're gonna talk about, how to use cylinders and alignment lines. All right, so starting off with cylinders, the first thing I wanna talk about is the horizon line. So keep in mind that the horizon line is the viewer, the viewer's eye level, or if you're drawing the picture, it's your eye level. So if this is our eye level here, this is the horizon line. And what that means is why that's important for cylinders is that if you have a cylinder that is below the horizon, you're gonna see into the top of it. Now, if you have a cylinder that's above the horizon line or your eye level, then you're gonna see the bottom of it. And it doesn't just stop there. If you have, you know, if, you're, if there are lines on this or if you're gonna render it with ellipses, then you're gonna, all those ellipses are gonna curve up. Whereas these ellipses down here, they're gonna curve down. So this is really important. This is sort of the fundamentals for drawing a cylinder. Now, the other thing you have to think about is if a cylinder is foreshortened, so if it is facing you like this, where the face of it is actually covering or overlapping the body, here you can see the side, but like this, it's foreshortened. It doesn't have to be totally straight. That's still foreshortened. It just basically means that this, the face is overlapping that. So if you have something foreshortened like this, you have to keep in mind that it's gonna get smaller as it recedes towards a point on the horizon. So it's gonna appear to be going to that vanishing point. And the line, you're gonna see the top. And if it was above the horizon over here, like this, you're gonna see another side and the bottom. Okay, so that's just a really quick overview, things to keep in mind when you're drawing filling. Now let's move on to drawing a simple object like this. So the main thing here in terms of an alignment line is a vertical line, because this object is fairly symmetrical. And then I'm gonna look at the overall width compared to the height, and just try to get my general proportions of my object. And I'm just gonna draw this as one big cylinder. All right, and then I'm gonna look for some key spots, like key proportional lines here, maybe in this area, it gets shorter. Okay, and then it widens out. I'm actually just going all the way out as if it was to here, just because then I know what the negative space is. The negative space is that space. This is the positive space and that's the negative space. You think about, if I just kind of color in back here, all of that space behind the object would be negative space. So I'm just using that here, looking at using my center line and my center line is not right in the center. I'm just gonna adjust that. That's gonna help me space how wide to make everything. And so I'm sort of starting with like a flat shape. So there's my center line right there.
okay, this is a pretty simple object, but I'm gonna make a point of why this is still a good thing to do, even for simple objects, okay? So there's my basic framework or layout, whatever you wanna call it. In this pose or in this, in this position, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of curvature from my ellipses. Things into little details like this is sort of just coming in here. A little bit of a bevel coming down. Starts to taper. I'm not really thinking too much about light and shadow here, but I am thinking a little bit about modeling, like making this look round. These core shadows running down the form, they can help sort of reveal some of the form. So I'm going to put those on there. And you don't have to stick with your original layout. Um, that's why we use different color. And you can keep making your drawing better as you progress. Okay, that's a pretty quick idea. But my point here is that using this idea of an alignment line, you can draw this from different points of view. So now let's draw this shape from imagination almost. I'm gonna draw in a horizon. I'll just do it over here. And now I'm not gonna draw from reference. I'm gonna imagine this shape above the horizon and start the same way. So I started with my overall center line, finding overall proportion and then sketching in sort of the two-dimensional shape use this as a little bit of a reference but I'm not actually drawing it from I'm not holding it in the position I'm seeing it I'm just using it as a reference all right now let's this comes back to here this is above our horizon, so we're gonna see under it. We're gonna see under the bottom. And this is what I mean about translating what you're seeing into the language of drawing. You're not copying, you're not holding up that object and copying it as you see it. You are, you're using your knowledge of simple forms to inform your drawing. So, Yes, we're drawing from an object, but I'm not drawing it in the position it's in. And I'm using my knowledge of cylinders and the horizon line to draw it from another position. And just keep in mind, every line you shade or model this form with should conform to the idea we have that it is above the horizon. So these lines here, if you're gonna shade it at all, they're all gonna curve up. I just shade the bottom flat. It doesn't mean you have to use curved lines, it just means that when you do, they conform the horizon line. They conform to the object. So hopefully you get the point of what I mean about an alignment line. There's sort of one center line to this object. Pretty simple. But what about something like this where we have multiple forms? So to start off, instead of having one alignment line, I'm going to start off by finding my overall sort of placement. So just a, a gesture. But I am thinking about the fact that there's a center line here that things do line up in a central axis. I'm gonna look at the alignment of this to the, the spout to the handle. Okay, there's my sort of two dimensional shape. Just looking at the spout as a, as a very basic shape for now. Okay, and now I'm gonna break down those forms. So we have, we have our first major shape, which is this sort of ovoid, our main sort of round shape here and again I want to draw this in a way that I could draw it from memory meaning I can understand it if you don't know how to build this from memory and you're not really sort of speaking that language of drawing you're just copying something and you can't 
you don't have the power to make changes, you don't have really the power to really speak with authority in terms of drawing. So when you're doing this, you want to study those forms in a way that you could draw them from memory. And I don't mean necessarily draw it without reference. I'll just, just like we did here, where we drew it from a different point of view than I was actually looking at it from. This is not quite a sphere, it's a little bit of a flattened top. Okay, coming down, there's a little bit of a bevel there. I'm gonna go right through the handle and just double check my proportion. Okay, thinking about this thing as a big ellipse. Okay, and then we have handle. And again, I'm trying to think about planes, like being underneath the handle as it wraps around. Studying it for its basic shape. Okay, so there's my basic drawing of it. Now again, what about drawing it from imagination? So let's just do the same idea. What if it was above us? I'll draw it from a different from the other side, but let's say it's above us over here. So I'm starting with that that main axis and then the simple shape. So I'm looking at this alignment line, this alignment line, and I'm gonna start catching it in, keeping in mind that what my perspective is, so meaning what is, where is the horizon line? Another way to say that is, am I below, above or below? I'm looking at this from below. So I'm gonna see into this, to the bottom of the teapot now. I'm just gonna change how this shape looks. I'm going to be sort of looking under it. See how this is curving down? Here it's going to be curving up because it's above the horizon line here in this demo. And again, I'm not really copying my layout, so it's just a really quick one. The idea is, again, not to do you know this perfectly right off the bat, but being able to think about an object from different points of view. Hopefully that makes sense, but that doesn't necessarily help us with something like this. So without getting too much into figure drawing, I do want to talk about how I would break down a person using relationships, alignment lines, and cylinders. Okay, so I want to apply this same idea to a figure. So I'm going to start off the same basic way, which is finding the overall sort of alignment of her. She's sort of leaning forward a little bit. And then I'm going to look for a gesture. So. What's she doing? Her arms are leaning back, holding her leg. Her legs kind of coming up to the hip. Her knee is coming forward to the thigh. Her head is slightly forward. And now I'm just gonna use simple ears and cylinders. So I'm gonna draw her eyebrows to her ears, that alignment line. That's sort of a, a specific one for figure drawing. We'll talk about that more when we get into figure drawing. But the, the main point here I want to make is not that you can necessarily jump in and start doing this right away, because it will help if we kind of once we've talked a little bit more about some of the basics of figure drawing, but it's just how does this apply to an organic shape, to an organic, you know, a human being. You can still use the idea of alignment line, gesture, cylinders. If you're curious about drawing the figure with cylinders, I have made another video about that. figure with cylinders but the major takeaway here is the gesture sort of that underdrawing structure and just breaking the figure down into simple simple cylinders cylinders are a really useful mass concept for drawing all kinds of things I'm just gonna ignore the hands for the time being okay okay so hopefully that was a good kind of intro to using alignment lines cylinders 
thinking about the horizon line and kind of putting it all together with a figure. Um, try this with objects around your house with, you know, with fruit, with teapots. I got a whole bunch of teapots from the secondhand store. They're great to try. Lamps, lamps are great, lamp shades. Have fun drawing.